Next on stage, Anne Steffensen, as I said, is the CEO of the Danish Ship Owners Association. And there's one figure I can always remember, that Danish cargo ships account for some 10% of all the cargo that is shipped on the oceans of this world. So, Anne, it's all yours. Thank you very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm so impressed to see so many of you coming up this early. Thank you very much for being here. Yes. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, four messages uh, that I would like to uh, convey to you, and uh, don't get me wrong, I agree with Andreas Norset that there is a potential, but I think that the potential is further out in, uh, in the future. My four messages is basically, first of all, that uh, Arctic shipping is challenged. I think we have gone from what I would call hyper-optimism to realism. My second message is where I see the biggest potential uh, going forward in terms of Arctic shipping is in what I call destination voyage, underpinning the economic activity in the Arctic. My third message is that going forward, we have to continue to make sure that we have focus on what I call dual sustainability. The slow growth means that we actually have time to get things right. And I think the Polar Code is a, an important example and a, an important step forward for that. And last but not least, my message is, cooperation in the Arctic is everything. There is very good reason to work together economically, environmentally, safety-wise. No one can walk the Arctic alone. So that is my, my message, and I'll elaborate a little bit on that. Just a few weird words about the Danish Ship Owners Association. We uh, are uh, the uh, eighth largest uh, ship uh, nation in the world, uh, measured by tonnage. We organize 98% of all shipping uh, in uh, both Denmark and, uh, and Greenland. And we have, of course, substantive experience in ice and Arctic conditions. So this is where I come from. Going to the, uh, the question of my first message about the Arctic shipping being challenged. If we look at what we have been focusing, focusing so much on debating over the past years, the transit shipping through the uh, northern uh, pas passages, we just have to say that five years ago we thought this was going to be a huge growth area uh, and in the heydays of 2013 we had more than 70 ships going through the northern east uh, passage, the northern sea route. Last year we were down to less than 20. This is an area where we have to look further into the future before we see uh, an increase in, uh, in shipping uh, in this uh, area. Uh, so in that respect there has been hyper-optimism, it's more realistic uh, now. If we look at the areas where we actually see there is growth, slow growth, but some growth, is in what we call destination, um, destination uh, shipping. And that is basically when we talk about uh, underpinning the economic activity in the Arctic, as Andreas Norsch had talked about, it's about providing uh, consumer goods, cargo, and so on to the people of the Arctic. It's about uh, making sure that the oil exploration, the mining, and so on is carried out of the uh, area. Uh, in my uh, ship owner association, we have a few examples. For example, Royal Arctic Line, whom you can see on the, on the picture. Uh, they carry 98% of everything uh, to, uh, to Greenland on their ships. We have uh, companies who are uh, carrying uh, iron ore from Canadian mines to European uh, steel mills and so on and so forth. And that area of shipping, I think we will see, will be growing also, also in the years uh, to come. So shipping is challenged. There are some uh, lighthouses out there, but it's, uh, it's going to take time, time before we get to a high growth in this area. And it's not all bad news, because the good thing about it is that when we have time uh, sort of to consider things, we can also uh, make sure that we get it uh, right. And for us, it's really important we are look at, that we continue to look at dual sustainability. And what does it mean? It means that what we do has to be economically viable, that we have to make sure that there is place and space for economic activity. We owe that for the people of the Arctic. They also need to have uh, ways to make a living to finance their society and welfare. At the same time, we have to do it in a way that is environmentally uh, uh, good uh, and also uh, safe for uh, the people uh, and for our uh, seafarers. And the Polar Code, as I mentioned, is a very important step forward. 
we look forward to that coming into force 1st of January. But we also have to say that we don't think that the polar code is going to be a standstill. We need to push further for more regulation. One of the things that we have put forward in the Danish Ship Owners Association has been that we should ban uh, the use of heavy fuel as bunker in the Arctic. That was a recommendation in the Polar Code, but only a recommendation. We think we should go all in and have global regulation in this area in order to provide more protection for our climate and also for the vulnerable Arctic regions. So dual sustainability is on top of, of our mind going forward. And last but not least, and this is my fourth and last message, we need to work together in the Arctic, economically, in terms of environment, in terms of safety. We are proud to be part of the Arctic Economic Council where we discuss all kinds of uh, matters related to the Arctic uh, region and we should go further down that way because if we don't, we are not going to make the most of the potential of the Arctic. Thank you very much.